From the campus studios of Sarland University, this is Robcast, the lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Hi folks, welcome back to another episode of Robcast. I'm Peter Tischer, Roger is taking a break this time, but I'm sitting again with Carrie Ankerstein here. Hi. Hi, welcome back on the show. Thank you very much. Of course, while I took a break, I did listen to the podcast you recorded with Roger, and you were talking about affirmative action uh, in the workplace, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and I was thinking while I was listening, is there any such thing as affirmative action on language? That's a, a really fantastic point. Um, one thing that I do when I'm teaching my classes is I have a tendency to address my students as guys. I say, hey, you guys, settle down, or can you guys do this? And one of my students asked me, why do you call us guys? Um, I often have mixed classes, sometimes more women than, than men. Um, and I said, well, that's a good question, but in America, guys is used as a plural you. Um, I said, you know, if I was from the South, I could easily say y'all. Or you and are. where I spent some time in New Jersey, you could say use. Yeah, use. But sometimes, sometimes that would be combined, use guys. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. And I had a teacher, actually, who I suspect was probably a leftist. Uh, he said, you people. Ah, mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. neutral. Yeah, that, that's neutral. I think you people and you all are, are, are very nice in keeping it neutral and very inclusive. And um, I have had women tell me that they don't, they don't like to be called guys. And I said, okay, well, you know, I really just mean it in terms of plural you. But it did get me thinking, why am I using a, a, a word that is so masculine? I would never address a group of people and say, you gals, which mm -hmm. I suppose would be um, the compliment to that. Right. And I did read an article about, like, why we need to stop saying you guys and say you all instead. And last semester, I actually made a very conscious effort to say you all, which I would sometimes say y'all, um, just, just for the fun of it, because I am American, although from the North. But, but what about other expressions, you know, apart from the pronoun question, which is a toughie, because mm. it gets you into linguistic fixes when mm. you, you know, really want to, want to, want to stay neutral on that because one funny thing uh, that I heard on the last, last podcast is at one point you were talking about maternal leave mm -hmm. which of course is not neutral at all mm -hmm. it should probably be uh, parental leave because it concerns both sexes yeah is that something that sort of sticks on you, even if you don't want it to? Well, that was that was a very fantastic point. And I did use maternal leave synonymously with parental leave. But of course, they're not synonyms. Um, mm -hmm. When you say maternal leave, of course, there's the implication that this is something that women do. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I made it clear that I don't think that women need to be the primary caregivers of their sure. children. I think there's also a thing like fathers. Which is why it surprised me. Yeah. And, um, and it, it surprises me, too. And I think sometimes these things um, come into our language and I'm not a big person on, on language and thought where I think that you know language really affects our thoughts but I think sometimes it can do in Germany we are at least at universities sometimes a lot of people are thinking that I don't know if you have heard about the uh, University of Leipzig where mm -hmm. they changed all the generic names of the different positions professor yeah. to their feminine forms yeah is that something that is thinkable in the United States. Um, it it is actually, um, and I was I was amused to read it because um, something similar happened. Oh, this happened to me years ago. Um, but when I was in school, most of our textbooks would use the pronoun he just as as a, as a generic form. Uh -huh. Um, for example, if a student would like to uh, take out a book from the library, he must do this. And then later on in my in my studies when I was at university, I was reading a book, I think it was about first language acquisition, and they referred to a baby and then said she. And I thought, whoa, did I, you know, do we have a, a female somewhere in this mm -hmm, text? And mm -hmm. we didn't. And then I realized, ah, they're using she as a generic pronoun. And my thought was, I liked it. <laughs> it was my first reaction. I was like, <laughs> sure. well, this is, this is nice. Um, but then I thought, well, are we fighting sexism with sexism? So the he pronoun is exclusive to women, but then the she uh, use is also then exclusive, uh, exclusive of men. Mm -hmm. um, and I did like the, the previous solution in, in German where you capitalize the, the I. Which is hard, of course, to pronounce. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's true. That's well, what true. about that uh, English solution that I've heard quite often uh, using not, neither he nor she, mm -hmm. but a plural, they? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I actually, I really like that. Um, it's very common in America anyway, and it was also um, quite commonly used um, when I was when I was a schoolgirl.、Mm-hmm. Um, and this this was not problematic.、Um, Could does that lead to some confusions though with the actual plural or? No, I think I think Americans are just very very used to it. I think the only thing that might happen is you you might raise suspicion. So if you were to tell your significant other, oh, I went out with somebody for coffee today, they were very interesting. They might be very interested <laughs> in, in who this other person was. Was it a man or a woman?、Uh-huh. Um, but no, generally、okay. speaking, we we do not find it confusing, and it doesn't bother us to say if a student would like to borrow a book, they must go to the reception desk. This doesn't grammatically bother. Us at all. And it doesn't sound weird because I think German、mm. students think it sounds yeah strange. Yeah, I think because of the more complicated morpho syntax that you have in German. Also,、uh-huh. you're you're you have a much greater awareness, perhaps, of of number in terms of plural and also gender der die das. Right, right. right.、Um, that we just don't have in English, and I and I don't feel that we are bothered by this. Yeah, that's the, that's actually interesting. That the only way to sort of neutralize gender that you have, in a way, is attacking the pronouns. Yeah. Because everything else does not have a grammatical gender, so、yeah. you can't even make a point here. Yeah. Can you? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So reduced、uh, structures、uh, can lead to problems, even when it comes to. Affirmative action, as far as language is、mm. uh, concerned. So we learned something on this podcast. Stick around for the next one, folks. But for today, goodbye. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.